Yeah, weed show here. I have a bad habit in the sunshine that it uh, tends to make me sneeze and that's probably what's gonna happen here, but it's not good. Chew, <laughs> that was legit. That's not acting. Do you know how bad it was to sneeze like in uh, March of 2020 when people freaked out every time I came out of a store and like sneezed in a public space during coronavirus times? Are we still during coronavirus times? Okay, that's not what we're talking about. This is a special edition of the Weed Show, a works edition, a factory edition, a rock star edition, a special racer edition. We're gonna talk about some things that we have seen this off season in motocross and supercross and some things that we are soon going to see because on December 8th, I'm gonna be flying to California to check out the new factory edition uh, KTMs for the Red Bull squad. We'll talk about that bike in depth in a moment. The fact that we don't know what that bike is because it's a top secret new generation design. But it led me to this whole discussion of what the regular factory edition bikes are most years. And then what Honda's works edition and the new Kawasaki special racer edition bikes are. Yamaha has a Monster Energy edition of their bikes, and I can tell you there is no difference between that bike uh, and the regular Yamaha, except that it has Monster Energy graphics, which is a lot of street value, because I have an 11-year-old jacket, has the Monster Energy logos, because 2010 was the last year I worked for Supercross on the old audio webcast, and I still wear the jacket because it still works. It still provides heat in the winter, and uh, when you have a Monster Energy logo, people say, do you work for Monster? And then I say, no, I work for a racing series sponsored by Monster, and they walk away because they think you would be able to give them free energy drinks and then you have no value to them after they find out you don't work for Monster. Anyway, so Yamaha just puts graphics with Monster on their bikes and to a lot of people, that's really important, I get it. The other manufacturers have now started this trend of the factory edition, works edition, special edition bikes. We're gonna explain it in a second. KTM pioneered this concept back when they signed Ryan Dungey uh, Tw late 2011 for the 2012 season and at that time everyone was like the only modern fuel injected motocross supercross bike ktm has is the 350 and the 350 in 2011 with andrew short was not successful in supercross so everybody's like they're not going to put dungeon on 350 are they no ktm was developing a new fuel injected 450 engine for their enduro bikes and the plan was to put it in the supercross motocross line a year later but instead they sped everything up and they created a 2013 model bike to sell in 2012 and get in under the AMA production rule, which I believe is 400 units have to be made for uh, production. And they called it the factory edition. Dungey got to race a 2013 KTM in 2012. So that's the move KTM has used and it's been very effective. In 2015, Dungey got to essentially ride a 2016 KTM and he was awesome on that bike in 2015. KTM was still kind of in the learning growth phase of trying to win Supercross in the United States and using this factory edition allowed them to accelerate that growth. They actually did it one more time. I think uh, 2019, I think was a, a different bike, uh, but it wasn't as radical a change as that 2015 uh, because again, that growth phase they were in, obviously now everybody knows KTM bikes are good for Supercross or not. Uh, they're improving, but it's more probably improving like this uh, than it was like this when DeCoster and Ian Harrison and Dungey first came over. So there will be an all new generation KTM bike debuting on December 8th next week. That's what I'm going out there to see. Uh, no one has seen this new KTM yet. I believe some spy photos are out. Racer X is doing the right thing. We're not showing it. You'll see it December 8th when uh, KTM releases the bike. Essentially what you're gonna get next week It'll be the 2023 KTM, but you'll be able to buy it in 2022 as a factory edition. So you'll have the regular KTM 450 SXF for 2022, and then alongside it will be the factory edition that'll be the next generation bike. It would be no different than Honda had an all new 450, right? Last year for 2021. Imagine if Ken Roxon got to race it in 2020 if they called it a works edition or something like that. It'll look completely different and probably perform differently from the current model KTMs, but it's not because it's a factory bike, it's just because it's next year's bike early. Now I do wanna mention uh, our folks from uh, Monster Energy Supercross, they are pumped. Fans will be back at the races and the old school races will be back in 2021 also, including Anaheim. We're gonna give four tickets away to Anaheim One on next week's Weed Show. So when I'm out seeing the new KTM, also Honda's gonna have their team intro at their private factory test track in California next week. We'll have weed shows from both. We'll have a contest that you can enter to win four tickets to Anaheim. But everybody can get a discount on Supercross tickets this week for Cyber Week. Go to supercrosslive.com, that's the normal website, and you'll see the pop-up right there. I believe the code is 2021CW, 
I don't know if that's for Cyber Week or Cooper Webb or both, but that code will give you up to 35% off of Supercross tickets now through Saturday, December 4th, Cyber Week, discount on tickets. You've got to imagine that Supercross tickets right now, the buying is at a premium because we didn't even have most of the races last year in the traditional venues. And even the ones we did go to, we couldn't have the maximum amount of fans. So there is pent up demand for Supercross tickets. Get the good stuff now at a discount and don't wait to the last second when the good seats or all the seats could be sold out. And the Supercross people mentioned, when it comes to tickets to events, uh, we don't have supply chain issues on those. They're not gonna be stuck on a boat off of Long Beach. So if you're waiting for a Christmas present that you don't think will show up by December 25th, get tickets to Supercross. You'll have them as soon as you buy them. Let me also mention that this is brought to you by the Honda Talent Sports Side-by-Side. -side. We've got two sponsors, could be Race Tech. That's the post-race show. We'll consider this a preview for 2022. So we'll say this is brought to you by the Honda Talon Sports Side-by-Side. Thousand cc's of power, an exclusive dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters, a little more reliable than a belt, which is the drive system and transmission on most side-by-sides, long travel suspension. They have a four-seater model, a two-seater models. Check it out at the Honda Power Sports site. Okay, so every couple of years, KTM, and I believe also you'll get a Rockstar Edition Husqvarna soon that would be raced by Malcolm Stewart. Husky's gonna get the next year bike a year early under the Rockstar Edition, guys. Every couple of years when KTM has a new generation of bike out, they get it out a year early under the Factory and Rockstar Edition guys. Every other year, the Factory Edition bike is pretty much just the regular bike with some cool bolt-on parts. And it might even be worth the price increase with the amount of parts that they give you. And that's the philosophy that now Honda is using with the Works Edition Honda and Kawasaki with the Special Racer Edition. So we're gonna talk about those bikes a little bit, my buddy. Johnny Oler used to be suspension guy for JGR, now has his own suspension shop here, Art of War, in Mooresville, North Carolina, where I live. And uh, he's seen like the Honda one, the Works Edition, roll through here so he can help describe some of the differences because I think there's confusion. What is the Special Racer Edition? What is the Factory Edition? What is the Works Edition? Are they actual works bikes you can buy? Are they worth the money? You know me, nothing's worth the money. Nothing is. I would want the cheapest version of everything. FYI, Honda actually still sells the previous generation bike like the 2017 through 2020 CRF 450R for a thousand dollars less than the regular current 450 and then for about three thousand dollars more you can get the works edition so let's talk to Johnny in here about uh, some of the changes you would get with a works edition versus a factory edition a little loud in here you got a big machine shop back there but I got a new GoPro thanks to GoPro for sending me this and I think we're good uh, so this is Johnny look your equal opportunity He's a KYB and show a guy. WP's putting in the center of the podium because the logo's a little bit smaller. There are all kinds of real cool parts and pieces that I'm probably not supposed to see on these shelves. There's some A-kit stuff over there. Um, so what do you get when you get a Honda Works Edition or a Kawasaki Special Racer Edition? They're basically bolt-on parts. You're not getting Ken Roxon's factory motor. You're not getting Ken Roxon's factory suspension, but you are getting some improvements. Johnny, you've even seen it. Someone rolled a Works Edition Honda through here and you did see some differences. It's not just graphics, it's not just seat covers, there's stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, suspension uh, yeah. improvements and coatings and um, yeah, forks are pretty easily evident to see what the difference is. Because of the coatings, coatings. yes. A uh, couple of minor changes internally, similar, I guess getting closer to the A-kit version. Okay, yeah. Um, not quite to the A-kit level, but yeah. close. All right. And then uh, you know, shock also, it, it's a little bit harder to notice, I guess, but you know, you've got the shock coating or the shaft coating. Yes. Um, but what's kind of surprising is that the, the shaft on the, the 450 Works Edition yeah. Honda is actually a larger shock shaft, similar to the A kit. Yeah. So uh, production is kind of the normal 16 millimeter. And the Works Edition actually has a larger shock shaft, which I don't think a lot of people know. No, I looked uh, at the website, didn't even say that. So they're giving you stuff that people don't even know about. I'm going to block the sound of the machines here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's not. You've seen a kit or work stuff. It's not quite that, but it is like a step closer. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is a step closer. And uh, again, I mean, the first time I even saw the Works Edition shock, I thought, okay, well, you know, it's got a, sh a coated shaft, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the fact that it's a larger diameter shaft, all the all the parts that you know have to go with it to, to fit the larger shaft, um, it's pretty cool because it, it's actually offering a little bit closer performance to the a kit. Yeah, but I guess my question is, this is where it gets tricky. Uh, we talk about this all the time. You're in the subjective business. Yes. It is very difficult yes. 
you've been beaten down. 12 years of working with race teams, beaten down by riders, because yeah. <coughs> there isn't a number that you can put on suspension to say this is better. Right. So you don't necessarily, a larger shaft isn't necessarily better, per se, There's but it could be. There's different qualities and yes. different features yes. to it. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, there's there's no horsepower or torque chart that you yes. can look at for a shock. Yeah. A dyno reading is really helpful to look at, yeah. but it still doesn't mean what the rider feels. Right. So, uh, so yeah, the, the larger shock shaft effectually, effectively uh, allows more rod displacement to go through the compression adjuster and makes it more useful. Okay. So bigger adjustments, things like that. Oh, so, the compression adjustment yeah. would have a larger impact. Right. So right. is this why we've always heard works bikes, their clickers do more right, than yeah. a stock bike. Yeah. Ah, I just learned something. And actually, they typically, they'll go to a smaller click yeah. because they're a bigger amount of change, so they're making smaller incremental right. changes. Right. If you had 22 clicks on a works shock, you'd be changing a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, you right. Don't need so to. We're, we're cutting those in half or, right. or even more. So here's what we're saying. Rule out that new KTM and that new Husqvarna that are coming, their next year spikes a year early. That happens every three years. And every other year, what KTM is giving you is a standard bike with some cool bolt-ons. That's what Honda is doing. That's what uh, Kawasaki is gonna do. Now, Kawasaki is taking it to another level. The normal Kawasaki KX450 has Showa suspension, but I guess the, the special racer is going to have KYB right, on the right. Kawi 450. So that's yeah. a pretty big change. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's uh, not something they'd off they've offered in production for a few years. Yeah, they do so, go. Most of the Japanese brands kind of go b bounce back and forth. Yeah. KTM, oh, sorry, Yamaha's always KYB. Well, yeah. yeah, as long as I've been alive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But Cali, and Suzuki, they kind of go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. sometimes they'll run KYB on the 250, show on the 450, things right. like that. So. Yes. Um, Kawasaki 250 has been KYB for a couple years now. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's interesting that they have a 250 KYB 450 yes. Showa. Yes. Now they're offering the KYB on the 450. So, yes. is that going to be better? Might be. Yeah. Well, okay, the reason I bring this up, and Chris Kiefer is going to test a special racer edition. I actually texted him and see if he hit me back yet. Uh, yes, possibly next week or the week after. Okay, so that's when we'll be testing that KYB suspension on the Cowie. Um, the reason I bring this up is, you've been on race teams and used both. KYB and show up. It's, it's subjective, right? It's not like one is always better. Right, right. The idea is for the manufacturers, right, to be like, there's two companies. We want to have a hand in both so we can kind of see if one is getting better than the other. We're always on top of either side. I suspect that that's yes. the reason. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea. You know, having yeah. the companies compete against each other. Yep. Uh, you know, if one is lacking, then the other one steps up, makes the yeah. other one step up. And they know firsthand so. because they're working with both. Right. right. Yes. Yeah, right. they have two riders on the track at the same time. They can yep. see differences. So yep. I think it's a uh, neat idea. Um, I don't know about the, the political side of things. That probably gets I'm a little sure bit that's difficult. Part of it too, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, riders thinking that one might be better and they oh, should God. have it. But oh, God. I can imagine that gets a little heavy. But uh, but yeah, it, I think it's cool that they, are, you know, Kawasaki's offering it in a different brand. Yeah. Um, we'll see if it's better. Right. We'll see. Yeah. So. The hard part is if you want to buy one of these bikes and you're like, okay, it costs, they're usually like 3,300 bucks more, which is a lot of money. But the real problem is if someone came to you and said, am I getting $3,300 worth? You can't really put a street value. The exhaust system, the graphics, yes you can. But when you get to coatings or changing from Showa to KYB, it's really hard to put a number on what that costs. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to buy true real A kit, you're talking anywhere from, you know, 55 to 7,500 wow, bucks. Wow, okay, so, yeah. So that's adding on top of the price of your, you know, your new dirt bike. Yeah. Um, the fact that a lot of these works edition bikes are coming up with nearly the same as A kit. Yeah. I think it's a great bargain. Okay, so you I think, think it's great. the yeah. 3300 is yeah. pretty good, actually. Yeah, okay. to me. Yeah. <laughs> Not to me, I mean, dude. No. Well, 70, 75 or 35? What, do you, what would you prefer, Weech? But I'd be getting C kit suspension, <laughs> not A, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. And oh, it wouldn't yeah. matter as far as the performance. No, is. no, yeah. it, no, exactly. <laughs> Look, we know there's people that are just saying, I want the best thing you got, whether they need it or not. Right. That's, right. Not, that's not what I'm asking right. for. Right. Yes, right. it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Okay, so good stuff, and uh, I think your hair got grayer during this interview. As I mentioned, the one rider saying, hey, is yeah, that guy yeah, yeah. stuff better than me? The PTSD yeah. from these racing days? Uh, possibly, possibly. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. 
It's very difficult dealing with bracers. I'm gonna get into more, thanks Johnny. I'm gonna get into more of that stuff. So somebody hit me up on Twitter the other day and said, hey, do you think that Adam Cincerullo uh, will get different treatment from Kawasaki now that he is the A rider on the team as opposed to the B rider when Eli Tomac was there? Tomac's gone to Yamaha, by the way, everybody. Um, that is not a legitimate question. This is shocking. This is going to shock everybody because I hear this A rider, B rider thing all the time. Teams don't have A and B riders. They just have two riders. And they just try really hard to give both riders the best they can. First of all, it's difficult to go to employees, such as a mechanic, and say, give me B-level effort. Okay, teams now they, nowadays to prove this go through huge efforts. They usually have crew chiefs, Kawasaki's case, they have a separate crew chief for each rider. So everyone knows I am getting that guy's full undivided attention. This dude is not working with the other rider on the team. The crew chief and the mechanic are just here for me. The other guy has his own crew chief and mechanic. So no one can say, hey, we have one crew chief and I'm only getting 40% of his time and the other rider is getting 60%. The lengths the teams go, to not allow their riders to think that someone is being treated better than others. Uh, they've even gone so far, I've heard this to teams before, to make sure that uh, after practice, right, there's two places where the, one rider sits here, one rider sits here. So the first guy, the, me the uh, mechanic or the team manager sees when he comes into the truck, he'll always talk to that rider first, just based on where that rider's locker is in the semi. They've had to start changing it where it's like, I talked to that guy first after the first practice. I need to talk to that rider second after the second practice. The lengths teams go to to not let riders think that they're getting unfair treatment is massive. That's not to say that riders still don't think that that is happening, but I can tell you that the teams try their best to keep their riders head in the game and have them always believe the team is doing what's right for them. Now that doesn't mean riders are always gonna believe it. That doesn't mean it's always true. Maybe some rider is looking over there and saying, why can't I have that mechanic or that crew chief or I think they like that guy more than me. It's the human brain, right? You can come up with a lot of things. Uh, second of all, you have the situation where, look, uh, riders will tell them things that aren't true sometimes as an excuse or their performance isn't right. And the first thing they usually go to is the bike and the team, right? Anyway, the question was, will Cian Cirillo do better now that he's the A rider on the team? No, it'll be the same. He wasn't being treated like a B rider in the first place. But I did have a counter with that person on Twitter that said, if the two riders were treated the same, why was Tomac running KYB suspension with Kawasaki and why was Sincerlo on Showa? Good question. These Japanese brands, like we said, Honda and Kawasaki, Suzuki, they tend to go back and forth. Yamaha is pretty much exclusive uh, KYB. They tend to go back and forth between KYB and Showa, and what I've been told a lot of times the reason is, like we talked about in here, they just want to be on top of both companies, internal competition, but also the best way to find out if one person's built a better mousetrap is to have that mousetrap under your truck. So a lot of times teams prefer to have the two different brands, sometimes. Like you said, there's a lot of politics involved. It could be cost. It could be we're trading this for that. It'll, it'll save us money or the access to the technicians or we just think this suspension is better. So this year we're gonna go exclusively to one brand. I believe Tomac, when he signed with Kawasaki, actually just said, I'm gonna be KYB no matter what. Can you accommodate? If not, I'm not gonna ride here. And I believe Kawasaki said yes. So he was KYB no matter what the entire time he was there. But that's pretty rare to have that situation. And my proof is that uh, I believe Ryan Villapoto went back and forth KYB and Showa during his time at Cowie. Obviously, he would have been considered the A rider on the team. Like I said, there aren't A riders, but if anyone would have had the ability to veto things, it would have been Villapoto. Point being, teams just tend to make this decision whether whatever direction they want to go. Uh, Tomac's situation was unique. It will be all Showa on the factory, the works bikes for Anderson and Cincerillo, I believe for racing in 2022, but the special racer edition bike you can buy has KYB on it. It'll be really interesting to see how that shakes out. And then the game changes completely every three years or so when KTM and Husky completely redesign the bikes. What you will see Webb and Marvin and Plessinger on next week and then racing in 2022 will look totally different than the regular KTMs because it's an all new generation bike. But that leads to this question, will that be good or bad? Sometimes new bikes come out, they're always tricked, they're always the latest technology. That's not up for debate, but sometimes riders are like, oh man, we had all this data and all this information. I was so comfy on the old bike. This is actually a step back for racing purposes. KTM, I feel, has been a little better 
and then other brands of integrating their racing data into the production bike so the racing team is essentially getting what they asked for all along and it's generally a step forward not a step back but that's no guarantee uh, an all-new bike Maybe it'll be better, maybe it'll be worse by the time they get to uh, Anaheim, certainly when they're just getting started. We have heard Marvin Muscan's flying at the test track. He had to adjust back to the old KTM to race it in public at uh, Paris because he couldn't race the new bike before December 8th. So at Paris, he had to jump back to the old bike and he did say there was an adjustment to go back to the old machine. So the differences will be fairly significant. Uh, very, very interesting how this is all going to shake out and we'll have more next week. Also get to go to the Honda test track uh, itself. They don't have an all new bike, but certainly they want to take steps forward with theirs. We will get to see the Lawrence brothers. I just said Jet Lawrence. There we go. Jet Lawrence. I said the name. The stonks are going up in this video. Jet, Hunter Lawrence, Chase Sexton, and Ken Roxon will be there riding at the Honda track. They will have their team intro next week. We already know who's on these teams, but I applaud the teams for holding these media days so we don't have to hunt down their riders for interviews. We just wait till the day when the riders are available. We get all the photos and videos and interviews we want. So I applaud the teams for doing that. So we'll have uh, a better weed show next week with more data from the riders. So good that I mentioned the Supercross promotion at the beginning. I'm gonna give away four tickets. Once again, for Anaheim, four tickets for Anaheim. We will have information on how to do that on next week's Weed Show when we go to KTM and when we go to Honda. So look out for four tickets to Anaheim. Remember everybody, remember, we didn't have Anaheim last year. We didn't have a lot of Supercross races this year. So you wanna take advantage of that up to 35% off. It goes through December 4th, which is Saturday. Use the code 2021CW. Is that Cyber Week or is that Cooper Webb? Maybe both. Punch in the code and get a discount on tickets. They might be going soon because we got a lot of pent up demand for Supercross tickets. Get them before they're gone. We'll see you next week and we'll give you a chance to win some for Anaheim.